This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. I'm still working with the postcard hyphen funny file that I created in an earlier lesson. What I'd like to do is change that plain white background and make it a little more visually appealing. I'm gonna do this by creating a gradient. A gradient is a tool that creates a blend of color. It allows me to pick multiple colors and it'll simply fade one into the next. Gradients can be two colors, three colors, four colors, or more. And in general, they're a great way of just creating the illusion of depth. They can be used to simulate light and shadow. And all in all, they're a lot of fun to work with. The gradient tool creates gradients and its options allow you to edit them. When you activate the gradient tool, it's at the bottom of the tools panel. Its icon is a little box that has one color blending or fading into another. There is a drop down list, the first choice, that allows you to choose from a group of pre built gradients. And I click the little chevron, the menu opens. And you'll notice foreground to background color, foreground to transparent, black to white. And there's a whole bunch of other gradients that you can choose from. So if you just wanted a quick black to white, or if you just want to use your foreground and background colors, it's very easy. But let's say that you want to actually create your own. We've got two ways to do that. One, there's an edit button right next to the gradient picker, and that opens the gradient editor. You can also just click on the actual gradient swatch itself, and they'll both open the gradient editor. So either clicking on the gradient swatch or clicking the edit button do the exact same thing. Now here, what you have is a gradient slider towards the bottom, and you have the presets on top. The gradient slider allows you to choose the kind of gradient you want. The gradient type could be solid, which is a very smooth blend from one color to another, or noise, which allows you to generate a very psychedelic gradient by blending a whole bunch of colors together. You end up with really interesting color bars. But what I'm going for is solid. I want a nice smooth gradient here. If I click on one of the color stops at the bottom part of the gradient slider, I can choose the color. I just click on the color swatch, and then I can choose whatever I like. Now for this, I want blue. I wanna go with a light blue. Okay. And now this original gradient was black to white. So my second gradient color stop is white. But what I want is a variation of this blue, sort of a darker version of the blue. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this color stop, and if you drag it around, you can choose where the gradient starts and stops. You can basically choose where the color starts and stops on this gradient. But if you're holding the option key, that'd be Alt for our Windows users, and drag a color stop, you actually can copy a color stop. This is a really quick and easy way of creating color stops that are based on each other. Once I have three color stops, I can actually remove the first one. And I'm just gonna take it and drag it down, and that removes it from the gradient. I'll drag my second blue out to the far right, click on its color, and I'm still got the same color picker because it was still based on that original blue. So I can just go with a darker version of that blue. That's about right, I think. Right there, it's a little darker. Okay. Now at the top of the gradient slider, you actually have opacity stops. So what you could have is a gradient that goes from a solid color to transparency. That's how the foreground to transparency gradient was created. I'm gonna give this a name. Just light blue to dark blue. And I'm gonna click new. And that saves this gradient into the gradient presets. So it's very easy to create your own gradient. I'll click OK, and now my active gradient is the one I just made. I then get to choose what type direction of gradient I want. Linear, radial, angled, and I really recommend that you play with these because they're actually kind of fun. To create a gradient, you use the gradient tool and just drag it in your document. And the great thing about a gradient is that it's overriding everything on the layer, so you can just try out different directions, different appearance of the gradient. You can choose a new gradient and easily work with that. It's really a lot of fun. So once you've created the gradient, 
it's really easy to just try out different effects, a reflection gradient, and there's even a diamond gradient. But what I wanted is linear, so I'll go back to linear. Now, if you hold down shift when you're using the gradient tool, it'll force the gradient tool to make a straight line. So in this case, I just want the lighter blue at the top and the darker blue at the bottom of the document. Nice, quick, easy, no problem whatsoever. A couple other things, you can actually set the blending mode. This is very similar to layer blending modes, except I can set it for a gradient itself. You can do the same thing when you're using paint brushes. Many of the tools that apply color actually have their own built-in mode setting. So in addition to being able to manipulate the layers blending mode, I can manipulate the blending modes of the tools that apply color. Now, usually I don't do that per se, because it gets a little messy sometimes when I'm taking different tools and they each have their own blending modes and I work with the same layer. So normally I don't do that. I'll just put each thing on a different layer and set the layer blending mode. I find that more controllable, but it is an option. I can also set the opacity of the gradient. So I could have a gradient that isn't 100% opaque, doesn't fully override the colors of what I'm applying it to. Now to do that, you'll notice that now instead of completely overriding each of the previous gradients, they're actually mixing together. Once again, normally I don't do that unless I've got a very good reason. So I'm gonna just reapply 100% gradient. That's much more controllable, I think. Excellent. Reverse reverses the colors. Dither is used mostly in printing. It makes it print better. It applies little dots in the gradient to make it print better. And transparency allows the gradient to actually have transparency inside of it instead of being solid colors. But in this case, I made a solid color gradient, so wouldn't really have much of an effect. Excellent. So now I'm gonna save this document because it's ready to add the other pieces of art I wanna work with. So file, save as. Name is already filled out. I'm saving it into the working files folder again. And I've got all of my options set, so it's gonna be included in the organizer. You don't have to do it. You don't have to include anything in the organizer that you create. I just find it an excellent way of keeping track of all of my work. And I'll click Save. 